I was so excited to start high school. The summer going into my freshman year, I used to just daydream about it. I pictured myself in the front row of the student section at the basketball games. I thought about every outfit that I would wear throughout the week. And I also thought maybe I would get more attention from boys and maybe have my very first boyfriend. But I knew that all of that was off to a really rough start when I found out that my big brother, Austin, was going to have a locker next to me. See, Austin was a senior when I was a freshman, and he was super cool, popular, funny, he played sports, but he also had a little bit of a reputation. He was kind of a bad boy, and for whatever reason, people just didn't cross him. He didn't like to take crap from other people. Of course, that looked a lot different when we were at home and when I was constantly getting him into trouble with my parents. He used to tease me all the time. He would call me names. He would twist the towel really tight and whip it at me as I was coming around the corner. And my least favorite of all, he would pin me down, get as close to my face as he could, and fart as hard as he could. But again, it took all but two seconds of me screaming at the top of my lungs for my mom and dad. Mom! Dad! And he would get off of me. My dad got so used to it, he didn't even leave the couch in the other room. Austin, knock it off! And Austin would stop and get off of me and leave me alone. But he also didn't accept defeat very well, so he'd always muddle stuff under his breath as he walked away. Why do you have to be such a baby, Abby? I'm just playing around. He may have been the cool kid at school, but at home, he was my brother, my equal. And I was not going to be subjected to his torture. All of this to say, knowing that I was going to be sharing a locker next to him in high school without the presence or protection of my parents, I knew that I was vulnerable. Vulnerable to payback. And he made that very clear on day one. I'd be walking down the hall, and he'd come by, and he'd sh take all my books and shove them out of my hands, and I'd have to scurry to pick them up on the floor. Or one day, when I was opening the code to my locker, he would shut it right as I got it open. But surprisingly, Austin was not my only problem. There was also a boy named Dylan. Dylan was in my grade, and he sat behind me in English class. And he also teased me. His teasing started off fairly small. He'd walk by my desk and steal my pencil and never give it back. But then it continued to grow. He'd pull my hair in the middle of class, or he'd take my bra strap and snap it. Then, one day, my teacher, who was writing on the board with her back faced towards the rest of the class, was talking, not paying attention. Meanwhile, Dylan stood up wound his hand back, and hit me across the head as hard as he could. Just as he did, the bell rang, and everybody ran out laughing. Meanwhile, I gathered my things very slowly and tried to hold back my tears. I do not want to be met by my brother Austin teasing me more as I go back to my locker. I'm in no mood. Much to my surprise, Austin noticed my tears, and he asked me what was wrong. Behind all of my tears and frustration, I said, there's this boy named Dylan, and he's really bothering me, and tried to muddle out as many words as I could. He was really kind, comforting, said, he's a loser, leave him alone, don't bother with him, and then went his separate way. That night, when I got home, I did what I always did every single night of high school. I walked into my bedroom, closed my door, opened my laptop, and turned on MSN Messenger, if you can remember that. <laughs> Although today, when I turned on MSN Messenger, I had a message waiting for me. It was from Dylan. Abby, I'm really sorry for hitting you. And tell your brother I said I'm sorry, too. <laughs> <laughs> I ran into Austin's room. What did you do? Apparently, when him and I had gone our separate ways, he went looking for Dylan. He was going to introduce him to the toilet bowl he would stick his face into if he ever dared touch me again. 
he acted like it was absolutely no big deal. He said he found him, said, hey, what's up, man? And then grabbed him by the back of the shirt and dragged him towards the men's bathroom. Dylan, who happened to figure out what was going on fairly quickly, grabbed onto the nearby drinking fountain. Austin, improvising a little bit, decided to just turn on the drinking fountain and get his face covered in water. Meanwhile, he just said threats through his teeth. Don't ever touch her again, you understand me? Dylan nodded, <laughs> and he let him go. See, I realized that I won the payback against Dylan that day, but I also think I won something a little bit better, a relationship with my brother. And for the record, Dylan never, ever touched me again. <laughs> but I also never got a boyfriend for the same reason. 